Okay. So starting with the 2020-21, uh, 2021, A-level paper, question number seven, subsection one. So subsection one says, why in a market economy, some goods and services are over-consumed, some goods and services are under-consumed. Why am I? What are they talking about here? What is this over-consumption, under-consumption? They're talking about consumed also. Just tell me what type of externality should we talk about? Should we talk about like production externalities? You don't have to, right? They're saying over-consumed, under-consumed. So what you can do is, you know, now we have been learning so far, goods with positive externalities are under-consumed. Goods with Negative externalities, they are over-consumed right? the, in consumption. So what you can do is, you can explain that story. Now always remember, Lama, now you have to break this question down. How are you going to write this for? Four marks. You break it down. You make the structure in your head and then you start writing. So they say, why are some goods over-consumed? Why are some goods under -consumed? So maybe you can talk about two marks about this. Two marks about why some goods are undercut. So you can start off your answer line by giving a small basic introduction. So you can say, you can start off your answer by saying, when a good is consumed, okay, there will be a private benefit and there is also an external benefit. Both put together is what we call a social benefit would be generated. You start off your answer something like that. Say like, you know, when there is a consumption activity that takes place, uh, there will be a private benefit for the consumer. That would be an external benefit for a third party. And also, both put together, there is a social benefit as a result of a certain consumption activity. You give a small introduction line like that. Then you can say, Lamai, now that introduction line marks have been there, right? That is just to enter into the answer. And then you can say, okay, in certain instances, now you, okay, you can also say that right, the market economy will then ignore the external benefit and will only make their consumption decisions based on the private benefit. So you all know there is uh, something called social benefit, which is the addition of private benefit and the external benefit. The market economy doesn't consider external benefit when they are going to decide on whether to consume or not or how much to consume. They only think of their private bid. So you say that the market economy takes into consideration only the private benefit of a consumption activity and ignores the external benefit. As a result of this, at certain instances, the goods are over-consumed or under consumption. This is just your introduction. Huh? We still didn't get into the proper. Then you can say, Lamai, there are certain instances where certain consumption activities generate external benefits. Give you an example, Lamai. So you can say, for example, vaccination. So when you get vaccinated, you all know not just you, not just you have a private benefit, there is a third party who will also benefit because you might not spread the disease. However, the consumer in a market economy will ignore this external benefit and will only take the private benefit into the into consideration when making a decision. So as a result, what's happening here now? Here, in a positive, now that's a positive externality story. You know? In a positive externality story, what is basically happening is this person is underestimating the true benefit neither. He is omitting or he is not considering the external benefit. When you get vaccinated, it's not just the benefit for you, there is also a benefit for a third party. So you need to say, look here, uh, because of this, what happens is, okay, this one is, yes, you can say this is a merit good, no problem, okay. This one underestimates the true benefit. As a result of that, what happens? As a result, this gets under consumed. So if you want, Lamai, you will not get really marks here. You can draw the diagram and show. I don't think they, are, they will have enough marks for a diagram here in the 
since it's just a four mark question, but you can give nothing to lose. You know, gala, quickly draw the uh, diagram. Say this is the uh, this thing. There is uh, two benefit curves. The marginal social benefit is higher than the marginal um, higher than the marginal private benefit. Okay. Saving okay. Uh, the marginal private benefit. Then you know you can say, look here, this is the social optimal level, and then the actual free market is the one giving given in black, and it's under a consume. You can give. Okay, you can uh talk about that. So that is two marks there. Under said power of consumption, so under consume this is one point. You can say you can say that they ignore the external benefit. So overall, they ignore they underestimate the true benefit of the good. That's why they under consume. Then on the other side, you can talk about the negative externality. On the negative externality, you can say, okay, this negative externality, for example, maybe smoking a cigarette can cause a negative external benefit. No, can cause. Now, this remember, in a negative externality in consumption, this external benefit is a negative because when you smoke a cigarette, you might have a private benefit. But the person next to you, okay, passive smoking, that person has a negative external benefit, right? Ah, so you can even say that it's an external cost, no problem. So you can say in a negative externality, for example, such as an activity like smoking, the consumer in a market economy only considers his private benefit. He will not consider the harm that he does or the negative external benefit cost to a third party, such as the person passive smoking standing next to him. So as a result of this, what is this fellow doing? He's overestimating the benefit. He's thinking, oh, I am smoking. I am getting, let's say, you know, some uh, stress released and all of that. That's the only benefit. But actually, he is harming someone else also that he doesn't consider. So he overestimates when this. You can especially say, Lamai, the social benefit is less than the private benefit. Eva, you have to mention, na, menna metana, you have to say private benefit is higher than the social, uh, sorry, metana, yeah, here the social benefit is greater than the private benefit. Here you have to say the social benefit is less than the private benefit. As a result of this, what happens? As a result of this, the good becomes over consumed. So as a result, it becomes over consumed. Draw your diagram also and show level. That is a perfect question answer. For your four mark question uh don't really talk about under production therefore under consume you can directly go into uh under consumption okay because they are specifically saying no over consumed and under consumed directly talk about under consumed uh over -consumed. is that okay first part is always remember la mai econ paper okay you have time so even if not needed, you write and show. The examiner will be impressed. No? So now in this question, maybe a diagram is not needed. But you draw a diagram and show. Come on, man. In the start also, you give a nice introduction and start your answer saying, look here, social benefit is equal to this and this. In a market economy, they only take private benefit into consideration. You know, that small introductory paragraph, the uh, two uh, graphs that you draw might not be something might not be something that might give you marks. We don't know. Now, we haven't seen the marking scheme when doing the A-level paper. We don't know that. So, maybe A-level scheme, they, who knows? Sometimes, maybe they would have given a mark to the So, nothing to lose. We will draw and we will, you know, don't just overwrite. You don't have to write pages and pages. But, keep a little bit more than what is expected. That is nice. Even when marking a paper, even when I go through your, uh, let's say, uh, your mock exam papers when now some people have given a little bit extra. I have asked only for this, but you have like drawn a diagram, you have given an example and so on. That's actually very nice when marking the mind. So that gives a very good impression on this. Now even I have not seen most of you, all right? Unless I would have seen your WhatsApp status, so maybe a DP. I have not seen most. Of, I don't know what which school I all from. Most of them, I don't know. I don't know uh, what you have been doing in school, but have you been studying? I don't know. But looking at your answers, 
I can, you know, I can get a good impression. So that kind of thing goes a long, long way. Okay. After the relationship is just one mark. I mean, yes, you get two marks for showing, talking about over uh, consumed. Two marks for talking about under. Okay. Then Lama will go to question two. I oh, question number two. Outline the main differences between a pure private good and a pure public. These people are, uh, you know, humiliating us, no? Right. So what are the differences? I mean, when they say outline the differences, please don't write, uh, you know, don't draw a table and put this. So you can start off your answer in this summary. So you can give your answer in two paragraphs, ideally. Or maybe like a longer sentence. So tell me, we'll start with pure private goods. Tell me pure private goods. What can we say, Lamai? Pure private goods are goods that are monogamous. Pure private goods are the goods that are, are. pure private goods are the goods that are excludable excludable and right but and then you can talk a little about what is this excludable and rival lamai. so you can say the if a consumer does not pay for this good he could be excluded from or he could be stopped from consuming this good that's what you call excludable and also you can say rival the consumption of one person will leave less for a Another person. So you can say, you can talk about what is excludable, what is private. Then Lamai, what else can be right for private goods? In what else can be right? Okay. So you can say, you can say, Lamai, uh, these private goods, okay, these private goods can generate, can generate, remember. Private goods, Lamai, sometimes are classified into merit and demerit. Okay. So these private goods, you can say, these private goods can generate positive or negative externalities, externalities in consumption. Certain goods are overconsumed, certain goods become underconsumed. That we explained now. Don't go and write that again now. Okay. So you can say, Lamai, private goods, now, over-consumed, under-consumed, they are provided by the market. Not that they are not provided by the market. They are provided by the market, but sometimes, you know, too much or too little. So you can say, they are provided by the market. So that is your two marks about private goods. Now, you are showing the difference. Now you say, right, you start your answer by saying, on the other hand, or you can say in contrast, a public good is a good that is monad. In contrast, or on the other hand, a public good is a good that is non-excludable and non-rival. Non-excludable and non-rival. Then you explain what is non-excludable. Consumers who do not pay a price for this cannot be excluded from consumption. And also, the consumption of one good will not leave less for another. It's non right. Okay, you talk about what that basic stuff is. And then you can say, Lamai, in a market economy, the producers will not produce public goods because a price cannot be charged, which means they can't earn a profit. Due to that reason, they will not produce public goods. So you have talked about excludable, non-excludable stories, rival, non-rival stories. You have shown that private goods are provided by the market, but either they are overproduced, overconsumed, or undercut. But if you take public goods, they are not at all provided by the market. You know that kind of differences makes it. And also, Lamai, support your answer with a small example. Nothing to lose. No. So you can say private goods, you can give any example you can give, right? Anything uh, provided by the market. Then public goods, you can give uh, national defense, uh, you can give anything that is there. Uh, 
is the original marking scheme in a diagram? It's like this now. The marking scheme that is for the markers to show that you no, know, they can give that in a table there. But your answer should not be that. That's the guide for mark. Right? You don't uh give that in a table now. That's very unprofessional. That's like very like a very babyish answer to write, I feel. When you give your uh, answer like in a table, uh, right here, private, here, public, excludable, non-excludable, rival, non-rival, you know, that's more like a very uh, baby answer. So don't give answers like that for econ. I don't know if other teachers have told you all to give for other subjects. For econ, I would say try to omit that. Okay? That's question number two. Very easy one. Then Lamai will go into question number three. Ah, stay to argue. Ah, for me, stop. State two arguments in favor of privatization and two arguments against privatization. Remember, in the uh, recent seminar, also we talked about privatization. I told you they're going to privatize certain stuff, the advantages, the disadvantages. See, they're not even asking to explain the why. All what they're asking you is to state. So you tell me two arguments in favor. So why should Sri Lanka privatize? Can you tell me? Arguments in favor. Arguments in favor. So in favor, why we should? Tell me. Yes, you can definitely talk about the improved efficiency. Right? Improved efficiency. Okay. You can talk about uh, increases government revenue. Right? Increases government uh, revenue. Right. So you can, within brackets, you can say, am I sales proceeds? When they sell this thing, right, government gets a huge revenue. And you can also say, am I, it reduces the, reduces the burden on the government. No, burden on the government. You can say, uh, so now the government doesn't have to worry about uh, these people paying their salaries, uh, financing their losses. Government doesn't have to worry. So it reduces the burden on the government. So no single line of Lamai. Only to state no. So you give three points. They're asking for two. You give three. Not that you will run out of time. Then Lamai arguments against. Can you give me the disadvantages? Arguments against uh, privatization. What can we say? You can say may increase unemployment. Right? So there can be uh, increase in unemployment because why the private sector firms lamai they are not going to keep all these unwanted people no, they will get into uh they will get into mm, let's say uh what uh cutting off the people using more and more uh machines and automated technology you can say that what else hmm? uh, you can say you can say, ah, uh, right? You can say, okay? You can say, Lamai, government might lose. Government might lose. Might lose control over these industries. Or you can say over these firms. Now, the moment you privatize Lamai, government doesn't have control. The moment you privatize, government's, this one is gone. That kind of thing is gone. Ah, then you can also say, now with that private monopoly story, you can put it under this itself if you want. Government might lose control since there is like a, a private firm that is very dominant and this thing. Okay. Mm, how about foreign engagements in favor of privatization? Mm, you can, but not a very main one. I would say when they ask for two, go with the very main. Mm, what else? Limitation of public goods. Mm, how are you going to connect now? Ah, you can also talk, remember my but think of the stuff that I told you on last class. Remember I told you the arguments against private, one thing is we might have to sell at a very low cost. You'll remember that. I told you this Sri Lanka airline, Zim, I told you even South Africa has been trying to sell their airlines for the last 10-15 years. They were not able to sell. And I told you, even in a good year, Sri Lankan Airlines makes only around a 5% return. So, why should you 
uh, invest that your money and in a loss making firm and get a five percent return when you can let's say uh put that in let's say a treasury bill or treasury bond or fixed deposit and get more than that you know so because of the low return you can say due to low return due to low returns to investors due to low returns to investors right the firms will have to be sold will have to be sold sold at a very low cost because otherwise no one will buy if only if you give it at a very cheap price only they will buy so you can give Yes, you can talk about increasing the price of the goods also. Okay. So likewise, plumber, now they have asked for three. You don't have to explain because the question verb clearly says state. So state means just points. So write three for in favor, three for against. So in case even one of your answer is put that little off, the examiner will give you one. Okay. Now, that's the third one. Then Lama will move into four. This one also we discussed. Yes, you know, remember, even in the class, I gave you like so many consequences. The economic consequences of a widening budget deficit, you have to explain. Now, just think. It's a eight mark question. Explain the economic consequences. How do you think they would have given marks? Do you think they would have expected you to write eight consequences or four consequences explained ideally four neither am i eight is for that ready so four proper points with explanation now think am i now this is an eight mark question this is like three marks i will tell you okay you can now before now before jumping remember am i you all have time to, again i'm telling you all in your a level paper even when you're doing mock exams now First, do the three questions that you're very comfortable with. The first three questions, whatever questions that you, when you select your five questions to do, three of, maybe some of that you're good at, no, some of it you're not very good. So first, quickly finish the three questions that you're really good with. So if you can finish that in half an hour, for the two questions that you're not very good with, you have around one and a half hours left. So that means now those two questions, you can take some time, you can think, you know, that has to be your strategy. I've told this to you all before also, we'll uh, again recap those someday. Right. So consequences of widening, of a widening budget deficit. So can you all give me some points, Lama? We can talk about number one, increase in, right? Increase in amount of public debt okay you can talk about this okay this you can talk about the public debt will increase now how do you explain you can say due to a budget deficit the government will have to finance this budget deficit either through foreign or domestic sources as a result of this what can happen is the government's public debt can increase now Lamai, you know how to make it nicer could the, give some numbers you can give some Sri Lankan numbers. So, in the year 2020, public debt as a percentage of GDP was this much. Now, in 2022, it is this much. So, here see, the public debt to GDP has even gone up. That is one consequence. So, nicely explain, Lama. Say that you have to borrow, then public debt increases. Like you can talk about that. Then also, Lama, what else can you say? And also, maybe even to this same point, you can connect. That the more and more you borrow, that means even your interest expenditure starts to go up. You can go there. That's one nice point explained in a paragraph. Okay, let's go to two. What else can you say? You can talk about the crowding out effect. Okay, you can talk about this. You can talk about, you can say, look here, when you, uh, when the government, when the government borrows from the banking sources, the amount of funds available in the loanable fund market for the private sector decreases. As a result of this, what happens? Market interest rates will start to rise. 
this would discourage private investment as a result private investment can start to come now that's another economic concern the crowding out effect store see ah uh, two marks there what else lama what are the other consequences that you can you can talk about uh, how about we'll go with the main ones ah huh? uh, you can say limiting public savings now what is public savings lama public savings is the difference between government revenue and government current expenditure So from total revenue, if you minus all the current expenditure, you get your uh, public savings. That is what you can use for uh, another for your capital expenditure. So you can say because of a widening budget deficit, you can say public savings is negative. You can say you can say what public savings is, and you can say this is negative. So this means the country will not have money for its capital expenditure uh, for the much needed infrastructural development. we don't have money for that so for that purpose maybe we will have to borrow and all of that you can talk about those lot ah then you can also talk about the inflationary impact you can say when this is borrowed through ah uh, when you borrow through monada when you borrow through the ah uh, banking sources that is the central bank and the ah uh, commercial banks i this could lead to what this could lead to the money supply in the economy increasing and thereby having a impact on aggregate demand and the price level of an economy right so you can say now you can talk about lama uh, how during covid then you know all of that you use the words you say monetary accommodation you can say during uh, the year even 2021 and all when the central bank kept on you know when the government kept on borrowing from the central bank what happened inflation and all started to go up ah. ah so you can talk about so no money for regular expenditure also so you don't you don't have, say that no money for regular expenditure that is yes that is also true but there are think consequences of this nothing ah, you can also talk about lamai uh, bop problems so you can say you know because of the widening budget deficit we have to take more and more loans and then later when we are going to repay these loans we might not have enough money that can have issues on our bop that can affect our exchange rate you can talk about those all so ideally lama like i feel right to be on the safer side around 4 to 5 points okay start with the main points ah huh? don't start with now don't start with bop first and then come to this they are asking what is the consequence of high budget deficit no ah you can also talk lama like, uh, the credit ratings so when you have very high budget deficits what will the credit rating organizations do credit rating organizations will downgrade your credit rating that's what happened in 2020 quota came reduced taxes in uh, expenses went up budget deficit widened then the credit rating organizations felt look here this fellow is getting worse and worse and what did they do now why they downgraded our credit rating why is that a problem when credit ratings are downgraded it becomes a barrier it is difficult for us to raise finance now i told you all remember we issue international sovereign bonds whenever we need money we uh, issue international sovereign bonds neither so when we issue international sovereign bonds we get money but now we can't issue because our credit rating is so low no one is buying so that kind of a thing also you can talk about uh, exchange rate lama is not a very uh, direct consequence that's why i said not to write it at the beginning you can connect that with bop so you can say because of the widening budget deficit we have to take more and more foreign loans and then when we start repaying those loans we have to repay those with interest lama so that means a lot of money is going out right it can cause bop even reserves might start to deplete and as a result your exchange rate might go into can deplete here again don't write that first lama that's not a direct consequence of consequence of a budget deficit by is that okay so around 4 to 6 points you nice right now now for a question like this even if you write one entire page good because it's a eight mark question so your one of these explanations can be around 
around maybe five to seven lines. Okay, I don't know. You all write and see. Okay, you can write. Come on, it's a eight mark question. All the other questions were also very easy ones. No? So, right. Don't and Lamai, don't uh, finish the paper uh, soon and look up and wait. Uh, properly take your full three hours. Okay, I know some fellows, you know, they finish the paper early and give the looks to the other people and wait. You're wasting your time. Okay, so even, uh, okay. Yes, uh, yeah. don't go into this uh, interest rate negative and all. You don't have to talk about that. Talk about direct money. Okay, so you properly time your paper, Lamai, like I said. First three questions, whatever three that you're really good at, a vertically under. And then uh, don't try the extra question also if you are at a good level. If you are if you are a student who can get let's say 60 or more, don't write the extra question. If you are a weak student, then write the extra question. If you are someone planning just to pass the exam, then writing extra one is okay. Because writing an extra question now gives the uh, you know the message to the examiner saying, look here, yeah, this fellow is not sure of his answers. That is why he has written an extra one. That signal goes the moment someone writes an extra question. If you are someone who is just that, let's say 30, 40 struggling to pass, then fine. Then safe side. If something went wrong, they will give you marks. Other one, fine. But if you are someone who is at least at a level of 60 or more, use that time also to make your current answer better. Because you before jumping into writing answers first see whether you can do that answer i'll show you all how to uh, select questions and all uh, probably maybe in the final seminar i'll show you all the tactics and managing time but you first you don't just uh, start doing a question no, you first read the entire paper then see what questions that you're uh, this thing with give me a second mm. okay okay so and then get things done that is 2021. Any uh, questions, Lamai? Are we fine? Safe, no? Not a very hard question, no? Normal, basic stuff that they ask, which we already know. We learn fiscal policy also. Now we are like, you know, experts of this entire thing. Right. 2021 A-level paper is done.